So you picked up your iPhone one day and you noticed that there's an update, but this is not just any regular update. This is iOS 17, the latest, the greatest, the big overhaul. So you go ahead and sacrifice your one hour of watching TikToks to download the software. And when it's all finally said and done, you are ecstatic. You wanna just unlock that phone and see the new software in all its glory and everything looks pretty much the same. Yeah, it's actually quite a sad story. If you're not, that's why you clicked on this video. And today we're gonna to be looking at all the hidden features and tips and tricks and everything that makes your quality of life much better with the brand new iOS 17. Why even own a smartphone if you're not gonna use it to its full potential? So let's get right into this. Okay, the first new feature has to do with phone calls. You have somebody that you're trying to call and they just don't wanna pick up your calls. So how do you convince them to pick up your calls? Well, iOS 17 has a new feature. So if you go into your contact section, now you can actually customize how people see you when you call them uh, because I thought if people see me with like a bike or something they might think I'm cool and maybe they'll pick up my calls <laughs> so you can do things like add your own photos you can even add a custom version of yourself oh look at that handsome guy take an action shot like this and boom now when I call tell me you're not gonna pick that up there's no way you're avoiding that call no way Let's be honest. Now, another feature you get kind of takes you back to the 80s because it's bringing voicemail back, basically. So if somebody's calling you, now they can leave a voicemail and you can actually see a live transcription of the voicemail and then make your decision if you want to pick up the call or not. Hold on, this seems serious. Hello? Uh, what do I need the permit for? I hope you got the permit for those guns, bro. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, I would definitely really, really appreciate it if you guys went and checked out my wallpaper pack, which I shot all on an iPhone. They're linked in the description down below. Now, the next feature is one of my favorite features of iOS 17, and it's basically standby mode. And you've probably seen this all over people's YouTube channels already. And it's because it's a very well-received feature. And basically, if you were to put your phone to charge and put it in landscape mode, then it will basically go into the standby mode and you can customize this mode to show so many different things and it's kind of functions like a home hub. You can put clocks on it, you can cycle through photos, widgets on there with calendars or to-do lists, and everything just kind of gets enlarged so you can see it from a farther distance, and it just looks really great on your side table or your desk setup or anything like that. Next up, you guys have probably already seen this on all ads and stuff like that by Apple, but you can basically touch phones now in order to exchange your contact information. <laughs> And it's kind of broad so that you can share things like playlists or share play whatever you're listening to, pictures, videos, and stuff like that. So, so it's basically airdrop without having to actually go and select that you want to send it. You just open it up, tap your phones, and boom, you're good to go. The next feature has to do with your camera, and I cannot believe we have not had this till now. But wait, hold on one second. Some, is something wrong with the camera? Everything looks a little bit... There, is that better? In order to avoid issues like this, now you have a leveler on your camera. So now when you open up the camera, you will automatically see that there is a leveler right there. You see that little line? So if your level is out of sync, then it's gonna pop up until you can kind of basically get it level and it will make sure that your photo is perfectly, perfectly horizontal. So good thing to have. Glad they finally put it in here. The next feature is Apple has also improved their visual lookup, which means you can now actually scan like food and stuff and it should be able to pull up recipes for you. So, so for the people out there that might be watching with uh, brown parents, if you've ever been to a restaurant and your mom says, ye kya bana hai? Main to ye ghar mein bana sakti hu. Basically like, why are you paying for this food? I can make this exact same thing at home. Well now you can go ahead and scan that food and hopefully pull up a recipe that you can give your mom. Also do cool things like, for example, if you're not sure how to wash something you can scan the tag and the symbols and everything on it will basically tell you the washing instructions so let's go ahead and actually test that out so just pulled off my sweater and we're gonna look for this tag now so you know how like clothes have like like all of these symbols over here on their tags I'm gonna take a photo and then there's gonna be a little eye indicator here we're gonna click on that and you'll see this option right here it'll say look up laundry care and there you go it's pulled up all of the instructions so now you don't have to guess anymore okay and the next feature has to do with maps now let's say you're going off road somewhere or you're going off the grid and you want to make sure that you have the maps for that entire area mapped out then you can actually download these maps to be used offline for a certain area and that becomes really handy because then I can basically access that 
off-site whenever I need to. So my recommendation, anytime you go on a trip or anything like that, download your offline maps to wherever you're going because you never know, you might not have signal or you might have some issue and that way at least you have a map that you can refer to. Okay, now the next feature is probably get some hate because people are gonna be like, did you couldn't do that before? Basically it allows you to interact with your widgets. Now you can actually interact with the actual widget so you don't have to jump right into it. Super helpful, glad that we finally got this. The next one is autocorrect and this is something that you might have probably already noticed even before watching this video because it's the first thing that kind of stands out even to me and that is when you're typing autocorrect works a lot better now and it will kind of underline these words that it has automatically corrected and you can just quickly tap on it to change it back to the old word and this will hopefully make your typing a little bit faster on the phone. You also have inline predictive text and phrases so if you're typing really fast you also see that the keyboard kind of notices what you're typing and it will kind of fill in the blanks and if it's the right word then all you got to do is press spacebar and it will input that phrase or word right in. These are all general quality of life improvements so I'm here for it. Next up, let's talk about messaging, which is apparently a big deal for a lot of you guys because iMessage seems to be like a popularity thing nowadays. Not sure why, but it is what it is. <laughs> now, what you could always do is basically in the Photos app, you can select like a subject and basically just mask everything around that subject to create this really cool effect. But now what you can do is add that subject as a sticker as well. So if you needed to let your wife know you got golf plans, then you can always send her a cute picture like that and then boom, right there. So now she'll be much more enticed to actually let you go on that golf trip. You can also do something now, which I've always wondered why you couldn't do before, which is basically swipe left in order to reply in line to like a message. Uh, this is pretty much standard on most apps. So I hated that on iMessage. I had to long press a message and then click reply and then start typing. It was like three, four steps in order to just do something so simple. Glad that we finally have this. Another big quality of life improvement. You know that one person that always keeps sending you like super long voice notes because they're driving? Now audio messages will be transcribed so you can just read what they're saying rather than have to actually listen to the whole thing out if you want to just read it. And you also have some other quality of life improvements. Like if you want to quickly share a photo, all you got to do now is press and hold the plus sign and it will basically pull up your photos, your recent photos, and you can kind of just go through that and send the message. Another huge feature within the iOS ecosystem is verification codes. And I am sure this is probably one of your favorites because it is most definitely one of my favorites. In fact, when I went over to Android phones, like I've been using some different Android phones for the past several months, it was one of the things I missed the most, which is if I get a two-factor authentication code texted to me, then Apple will auto input that code into whatever application or websites requesting that one-time passcode. So super, super helpful, absolutely love it. But now Apple has also added the ability for these verification codes to be pulled from email. So also another cool thing that I noticed that there's an option now for you to go and toggle this item here, which will allow you to automatically delete the messages of verification codes once it's been used. Used. This is basically like a game changer for me. I, my text messages are literally cluttered with like 90% one-time passwords. So next up, we all know that a bunch of you guys watching this are very likely sharing your streaming services amongst a group of friends or family. With iOS 17 now, if you wanted to share passwords for a particular group of items, so for example, all your streaming services, then you can make a group of streaming services, throw all of those in there, and then share the passwords for all of those amongst a group of people. So it makes password sharing a lot easier. This way you don't have to send your Disney Plus, then Crave, then Netflix, then Hulu, all separately to your best friend, oh, sorry, your, your family member, um, yeah. Now, aside from all of this, you also have a bunch of other smaller differences that you know might be really helpful for a lot of people. For example, you have mood tracking, so you can go ahead and actually track your mood within the health app, basically be able to track what you're doing in certain days and how certain activities or certain things you're consuming like coffee or something like that, how that will actually have an impact on your mood over time. Now, another one of those features that actually helps you with your health, and if you basically go into your settings, then we go into screen distance. And this is something that you can turn on, basically tell 
tells you that the suggested distance of using your phone is about 30 centimeters, which I do not follow personally. It'll basically encourage you to hold your phone a little bit farther away from your face in order to help you with the eye strain or avoid risks of getting myopia later on down the road. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you guys. Let's throw a mustache emoji down in the comment section down below to show who the real overthinking fam are. Like this video, then I'm sure you're gonna love this one and this one, which YouTube thinks you're gonna really enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.